Welcome back. I'm Nate Moore. This is Excel Video 87. We're going to work through offset today. Offset's an Excel function that starts at a given place, wherever you tell it, and it says how far from this anchor point do you want to go over or back or up or down, whatever direction do you want to go from that anchor point, and then how wide or how high of a range do you want to return. Now let's see if I can say that in English. Here's an example. The build charges function that we're playing with if in this chart would work if we did this. If we did offset, then we said, all right, where the first question is where do you want to start? And I want to start at the sheet or this worksheet or tab that's named rows and go to B2. So I want to start right here at the top of my data for this chart. And I want to go at B2. And then the next two say how far in terms of rows and columns do you want to move from that anchor point? Well, I, I want to start right at B2, so I don't want to move any rows. I don't want to go up or down, or I don't want to move any columns. I don't want to go left and right. You can make those numbers positive or negative. If you're, you know, let's say you're here and you wanted to go up, you could always go up. You know, from this reference point, you could go up negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or whatever, and move around. But if we've set our reference point at B2, so 0 and 0 says I don't want to move any direction from B2. And then the next, there are the final two are what are the height and the width of my range. Well, the height is going to be 6. One, I'm going to start here and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I'm going to capture that in my initial chart. And then the, 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 then this is the, the width, or how many columns do I want to include? Well, I only want to include one. I've got my data in one column, and, and in this example, six rows. If I punch that in as offset, that's what I'll get. The clever thing is putting one more piece of information in offset, so that rather than hard coding or putting the values in for all five of these, what I've done down here, it, this is the actual formula that's driving this chart. And here's what's involved with it. It's offset, and we're still going to start at rows B2. I'm still going to anchor right there. And I'm not going to move in terms of rows or columns. So here's here's build charges, and here's the, here's the detail. The reference starts right there, comma, how many rows? Zero. And here, see, there's the comma, how many columns? Zero, comma. And then you have to understand what this count function does. What count does is it goes for this range that I've given it from B2 to B13, which is, you'll look, B2 to B13. Maybe I'll just arrow over one so you can see. B2 to B13 would get me from there all the way down to December. So that's going to cover every month that I expect to see in my chart. So by counting from B2 to B13, it's going to give back to me the actual number of values that are greater than 0 in this chart. So whereas this one, when I do 0, 0, 6, and 1, it's going to give me the first 6. By putting count there, I don't have to go back and make this a 7 now. All count's going to do is it's going to start and say 1, 2, 3, and go down at the end of the day. It's going to count and have 7. And then when I add another number here, say 5, 21, 8, 8, 9, it's going to automatically update because what my offset form has got in there is this count that's saying, see here's the count function right there, from B2 to B13, tell me how many are in here. And the count is eight. It's figuring out that there's eight months in there, so it's going to do eight data points in my chart. The whole key is to put this count function or some other automatically updating function so that as my data moves, count will figure out if I delete these three. It'll say, hey, now your count's only five, and I've got one, two, three, four, five months. Here again is the order that you need for offset to work. I've put the name of my range here. In fact, you know, let's get rid of that space there because that's going to be more accurate. It's really build charges. Here's the reference. That's my anchor point. I start with an anchor point and put a comma. How many rows or columns do I move from that anchor point? Well, I don't want to move any from it. I'm right where I want to be. I'm not going to worry about that. What's the height of the range I want to graph? Well, the height is how many, not, how many cells I have in this range that are greater than zero. That's what I want to chart. And I've got five here. And if I... Um, Let's do 511873. Now I have 6 and it automatically updates because every time um, Excel calculates, it's going to go in and say, hey, I'm going to count. I'm going to find that there's 6 and that works. And then the last variable is how wide is it? And in this case, I only need it to be one wide because um, my range here 
is six high, but only one cell wide. That's our first shot at offset. Next time we're going to do a, a, the whole example all over again. All we're going to do is do it instead of rows. We're going to do it in columns. We're going to put the data a little different way. And we're going to walk through the very same idea of where do I, where's my anchor point? Where do I start? How many rows and columns do I want to move from that? What's the height and width of my range? Those are the five components right there that make up VLOOKUP. And you just put a comma between each of the five components, or I get one, two, three, four commas like that. And it will automatically update your chart every time Excel calculates. It's very slick and it's very powerful, and we're going to do another one. Thanks for watching.